everyone. I, on behalf of Stellar Investor Relations, welcome you all to Tarachan Infra Logistics Solutions Limited Q4 and FY24 earnings conference call. We shall be sharing the key operating and financial highlight for the fourth quarter and full year ended March 31, 2024. We have with us today the senior management team of Tarachan Infra Logistics Solutions Limited, Mr. Himanshu Agarwal, full time director and CFO. Before we begin, I would like to state that some of the statements made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risk and uncertainties. Documents relating to the company's financial performance, including the investor presentation, have already been uploaded on the stock exchanges and the company's website. I now invite Mr. Himanshu Agarwal to share his initial remarks on the company's performance for the quarter and full year, and then we will open the floor for Q&A. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you for the introduction, Vishal. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I, Himanshu Agarwal, the whole time director and CFO of Tarachan Infra Logistics Solutions Limited, welcome you and thank you for being a part of the earnings call for Q4 and FY ended 31st March 24. At the outset, it gives me immense pleasure in announcing that the company has migrated to the NSE main board from the NSE Emerge on 16th of April 2024. Given that this is our first call post our migration to the main board, I understand that some of you might be new to our company. So to start with, I would like to give you a brief about what our company does. Our company operates across the length and breadth of India through its three key segments or verticals. Segment A, equipment, rentals, and infrastructure works. Segment B, warehousing, handling, and transportation. And segment C, steel processing and distribution. In our Warehousing, handling, and transportation segment, we are into warehousing and logistics solutions specifically for steel products that we execute primarily for PSU companies like Steel Authority of India Limited and Rashtriya Spad Nigam Limited, more famously known as Bizac Steel. The company has a vast experience of more than four decades for steel handling projects where we are involved with handling of more than 10 million tons of steel per annum at warehouses either owned by the primary client or owned by us. In our equipment rental segment, the company has about 300 machines which comprise heavy-duty cranes, filing rigs, and man lifts. The largest crane the company has is of 800 ton capacity. There are hydraulic piling rigs which are used for earthwork or groundwork uh, to be done for civil construction works, while the man lifts or aerial working platforms are used to work at heights of 40 meters and above. In addition to this, the company also has road equipment and steel processing equipment for processing of TMT bars, which are used, again, in construction activity. The company in the infrastructure space has been active in the construction of large metros in the uh, metro rail network, which is spread across the country now. The company has participated in Mumbai, Bangalore, Ahmedabad, Surat, Indore, Pune, Chennai, and many more metro construction works till date and is still actively working in many metro projects under construction. We have played a very important role for the construction of the first ever bullet train of the country, which is also known as the Mumbai Ahmedabad High Speed Rail Project. The company also provided equipment extensively for the construction of the Atul Setu in Mumbai. Apart from that, our company is into industrial capacity expansion projects where we are working actively with the cement industry, steel industry, petrochemical, uh, refineries, and the power sector as well. Now the company has concrete plans to enter the renewable energy sector in this financial year and anticipates that this sector will contribute about 5 to 6 percent of the total revenue for the company in FY25. We have a very diverse team of experts which are spread across 21 states in the country. Our ever-growing team now consists of 731 engineers, operators, riggers, and administrative team. The company is active at more than 50 working sites across the country and also has operations with LNT at Mauritius. With that, now I would like to take you through the financial performance of the company for the quarter four and the financial year ended 31st March 24. The key highlights of the period are as under. The company recorded its highest ever quarterly and yearly revenue and profitability in Q4 and FY24. It also had its highest ever debt repayment of rupees 38 crores in FY24, with, it, with now the debt equity standing at 0.9, the ratio at 0.9. Uh, 
the company's working capital cycle has also improved and receivable days have come down to 84 days. The company has an order book of 138.323 crores as of the 1st of May 2024, which is to be executed in the current FY. This year, we achieved significant milestones. Q4 revenue increased by 19% to 46.90 crores, and for the full year, a robust 21% growth totaling 1774.86 crores. The EBITDA margins surged by 300 basis points to 33% for FY24, while our profit after tax soared by 141% in Q4 and 72% annually. All of this comparison is on a year-on-year -year basis. For the segment revenue mix, our equipment rental segment contributed 44% to the revenue while posting a very healthy EBITDA of 51%, which is a 1,600 basis points Y-on-Y -Y increase. The warehousing and transportation segment contributed 48% to the revenue, with an EBITDA of about 23%, which saw a decline of 400 basis points year-on-year. -year. The steel processing revenue share was 8%, which was down from 10% in the last financial year. In our equipment rental segment, the company has witnessed a surge in the average monthly yield, which was at about 2.85% for FY24. The company's order book has grown by 42%, 238.23 crores as against 97.49 crores as on 1st of May 2024. As already stated, this order book is for executing in the current FY up to 31st March 2025. Going forward, the company is actively working on entering into the renewable energy sector through its equipment rental division. Moreover, we are making positive strides towards our venture into specialized EPC projects in the civil and mechanical realms. The company has set an aggressive target of minimum 30% Y-on-Y growth for FY25 through our sustained efforts towards nation building. With that, I would like to now open up the floor for Q&A and hand it back to Vishal. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Swapnil Kabra from SK Enterprises. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Firstly, congratulations on a very good set of numbers. Uh, sir, I just wanted to understand a bit uh, on the rental yield. So what is the current rental yield that we are getting? And uh, are we seeing any positive traction here? Uh, thank you, Mr. Kabra, for the uh, congratulations and the question. Uh, so as I understand, you wish to understand the rental yield. Uh, so as I stated in my opening remarks, uh, we have witnessed the uh, rental yields on a monthly basis to reach 2.85% on an average for the FY24. And uh, you had a second question which I didn't understand. Uh, yes, so are we, are we seeing any positive traction? Is our uh, yield increasing uh, on quarter on quarter basis? Yes, uh, see, on an FY on FY basis, definitely there has been an increase, and on a quarter on quarter basis, the yield is dependent again on the seasonality of our industry because um, the first two quarters tend to be uh, slightly lower on the uh, demand side, and then the demand suddenly picks up in the last two quarters post monsoons. So that that does lead to uh, a, a change in the quarter on quarter yield, but we do primarily a year on year comparison to get a better understanding. Okay. And so, as we have announced huge capex for the equipment rental business, what kind of demand are we witnessing there? And uh, is this for any specific client? Uh, so, uh, the demand is huge. Uh, we got across the sector. So, we, as we are working across the sectors of cement, steel, in the petrochemical sector, and now we're also uh, entering the renewable energy sector. So, there is sufficient demand to cater to our CAPEX plans, which will again be done as it is a proposed CAPEX plan, so it will be done uh, based on once we have orders in place. Uh, no, it is not to any specific client. Uh, it will be spread across the sectors. 
Okay. So just one last question, if you can squeeze in. Uh, how does the rental yield change over the course of assets' life? Uh, it will, uh, Mr. Kabra, it depends actually on the demand uh, because the asset yield, the yield, uh, if we look at the depreciated value, the yield will be much higher. So in that sense, uh, the yield can be seen as higher because uh, the equipment usually depreciates over, these are large cranes, very sophisticated machines, uh, which depreciate from 15 to 20 years. So they have a very good life with regards to being able to earn uh, the yield. So that yield number, if we're calculating on the depreciating value, then the yields will definitely keep rising. So actually, I wanted to understand the uh, realization or the actual absolute number of the rent that you're fetching. Does it change if the asset gets old? So, uh, no, the, the rentals are predominantly similar. The only advantage once the equipment gets older is uh, you have the bandwidth to be price competitive, if that is what you wish to know. Um, but um, there is not much of a change. The only change, if you would see with regards to the rentals, is again uh, totally dependent on the demand and supply. The aging factor does not lead uh, to too much of a change, and and the policy that our company follows, we also churn out equipment after uh, you know nine to ten years of its age. So we uh, make sure that we are not falling into a scenario where with too much of the equipment becoming older, leading to any lower rentals. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Dolly Chaudhary from Nivesh. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on a great set of numbers. Uh, I, first of all, I wanted to understand the breakup of our order book of 138 crores uh, segment-wise. And I also want to add a question that uh, we also received order from sale of 110 crores, which is executively open five years. So how uh, it is included in this order book position? Uh, so thank you uh, for the question, um, Mr. Dolly. Yes, uh, the order book of 138 crores as on 1st of May 24, it includes uh, the sale order that we had received. Rather, uh, the sale contract that we received, that was to start in May 2024 itself. So the order book definitely includes that. And with regards to the spread of the order book, uh, it is uh, about 70% of that order book is from our warehousing and transportation segment because there we've got long-term contracts and hence it has a better uh, clear visibility on the order book for the entire financial year. While for our equipment rental division, the order book is visible primarily more for six to six months to one year for certain equipment, but mostly six months is and then the orders are usually extended by the client. So when we are talking about the order book right now, uh, there you will see that it is primarily uh, for highly uh for I'm sorry to interrupt sir, we're not able to hear you. Hello, can you hear me now? Okay, so uh, what I was saying is that the uh, order book uh, has a current visibility from the warehousing and transportation segment for 70%, and the rest of the order book is from our equipment and rental division. Uh, so just a follow-up on that, that uh, we have also mentioned that this 138 crores order book is executed up to 31st March 2025, and yes. that the 10 crores order book uh, is of 4.5 years. So have we uh, adjusted for it? Yes, ma'am. So uh, out of the 110 crores, uh, the portion that is executable in this financial year has been, has been considered for this year, and the rest of the portions will be considered in the subsequent years. So uh, the 138 crores does not include 100% of 110 crores, is, if that is the question that you asked, um, because we have other contracts which are already live with the sale and RINL and other transportation contracts, which also form a part of the 138 crores, that is to be executed in this FY. Uh, okay, and next question would be that uh, we have mentioned that uh, uh, we have handled total steel in FY23, around 95 lakh if I'm not wrong. So what would be that number for FY24? That number uh, would be somewhere, we haven't got the numbers yet, I don't have the exact number, so it will be about uh, close to about 11 lakhs in the FY24. Okay. 
and uh, I actually wanted to understand on the depreciation policy. Or uh, depreciation has fallen significantly for this quarter. So, what would be the reason for it? So certain uh, uh, equipment, which are the larger crawler cranes, they have a life of 20 years. And as per the provisions in the Companies Act and uh, whatever the uh, guidance by our professional and statutory auditors, uh, they have advised for any, whatever, wherever the necessary correction was required for the depreciation, that has been done. And that has come into effect for the last quarter. So our depreciation policy has changed as well. That's what. Uh, not necessarily changed, uh, but it is following the same policy wherein certain uh, equipment which were which had a uh, possibility or which are already uh, allowed to be depreciated over a larger period of time or over a longer period of time, that has been taken into consideration. Okay. So uh, next question would be uh, that we have mentioned for FY23, our lifting capacity was 2,245 metric tons. So what would be this number for 2024? Uh, lifting capacity increase for 2024. Yes. Uh, so that that number has already uh, re crossed. Uh, it was 24. Just a second. Uh, could you please repeat that? Uh, it was 2,245, 2,245 metric tons in FY 2023. That has uh, crossed about 2,600 metric tons. And what will be our target after this CAPEX is 1 of 160 crores? Uh, what will be our target for the uh, tonnage capacity? Uh, the tonnage capacity, we are because targeting the higher capacity uh, machines, the tonnage capacity will increase drastically. But because of a certain business strategy, I will not be able to declare that as of today. Okay. Uh, I wanted to understand one more, one more thing that we have uh, our sector mix has changed significantly from FY23 to FY24 in favor of metals, cement, and petrochemicals, uh, and it has decreased for infrastructure. So I wanted to understand how it uh, impacts our business in terms of maybe yields have increased or these are long term contracts. So how it has impacted our business in terms of it. So yeah, so the, it has impacted us positively as you can see in the numbers. Um, wherein the these capacity expansion projects that are there, these are uh, which have helped us bring in better revenue and better profitability compared to the infra works. Also, up until last year, the company was involved in subcontracting works in the infra space that the company stopped doing post September 23, which has also led to uh, the company venturing into other areas and expand its reach in the metals, cement, and petrochemical sector. So in terms of yield, it has not changed. Uh, it, has been, it has changed because of these sectors. Yes, yes. That is why the yield has reached 2.85%. Okay. And uh, just about the CAPEX, uh, when can we expect it to get operationalized and uh, until what year? Yeah. So the CAPEX is uh, currently being planned out. Uh, we anticipate that this CAPEX will be executed over uh, this financial year and the next financial year, given uh, what kind of orders we are able to fetch and the kind of uh, visibility we see with our clients. And uh, you will be able to then accordingly see it in the subsequent financial results. And how are we planning to fund this CAPEX? So it will be a combination of uh, debt and internal accruals. And because uh, the in, in our industry, uh, with the large machines, the CAPEX is primarily done through internal accruals, and also there is a component of supplier's credit. So that comes into the books at a later stage when the supplier's credit period is concluded or, you know, the LC matures. So currently we have approximately 85 crores of debt. So like, uh, what figure can we expect going forward? So uh, the uh, debt currently, if you would look at the secured term loans, is about 70 odd crores, uh, and that is what will remain constant over the next uh, few years because, as I said, there is a, a component of supplier's credit, so the debt will not be coming onto the books immediately, and it will only come in when uh, the, the credit period matures. So 
which allows us time, uh, which will enable us to pay back what we are already paying back. We are paying, paying back almost about 30 crores on an average uh, uh, in a financial year. And last year we paid back more debt because there were higher inter- uh, accruals and we also had some fundraise through the preferential allotments. So that enabled us to pay back 38 crores and that is uh, the target that we keep paying back sufficiently while our debt remains constant within that stage and we bring down our debt equity which is at 0.9 right now the target is to bring it down even further okay and just uh, one more question that our uh, receivable days have been reduced significantly over the years so what has been the reason for it the reason for it has been a combination of reasons one the revenue mix has changed uh, the infra space tends to have an elongated receivable cycle Second, uh, we have had more financial prudence come into play. And third, uh, we did face a lot of challenges earlier because of the two years of COVID-induced challenges. So uh, that that has now uh, weaned off, and we have become more prudent about what type of clientele we are working with, and the terms have become better. Um, the kind of the revenue has been moved to the sectors where the receivables are much faster. So a combination of all of that has helped us. And if I can add just one more question that uh, sorry, we have... Could you please return to the question queue for follow-up questions as there are several participants waiting for the turn. Sure, I'll Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to add this question from all participants in the conference, please limit your question to only two questions per participant. Next question is from the line of Bhavya Sonawala from Samsa Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on a great set of numbers. Uh, I have just two questions. Uh, the first question is, you know, we have seen a shift from infra to metals and cement and petrochemicals uh, for that matter in the equipment hiring space. Uh, how does the trend look and, you know, can you give us some guidance on how what do you think this will go ahead from our order book and your view uh, on how this is going to go ahead? Uh, so thank you for the question. Uh, so the revenue mix would be similar to what you see as of now, as we have uh, been able to distribute it in, in the uh, anticipation of what we wanted to do over the last financial year. Um, one change you would see, as I've mentioned in the opening remarks, is the renewable energy sector, which is currently missing. It's possible that it will be added to the revenue mix, and we might see some changes there. But uh, more or less, uh, the revenue mix that we have seen for the last financial year and that is where we see going forward. Where we see it going forward. Uh, okay, understood. Uh, my next question is on the renewable sector that you mentioned. Uh, we just wanted to know what kind of tonnage do we look at while entering the sector? Uh, in the current uh, gamut of our portfolio, is there any kind of train that is already you know that can enter the sector, or are we looking at a complete new tonnage? Uh, if you can throw some light on that. Yeah, so um, to answer that, we have sufficient uh, bandwidth within our current uh, fleet of machinery to enter the renewable energy sector, uh, but we would need to add, when required, more machinery because of the already occupied state of current machinery, if that be. So um, it is not that we don't have the machines to enter the renewable energy sector, if that's uh, the question. Um, We have sufficient uh, bandwidth there, uh, but uh, the tonnage usually is higher capacity crawler cranes and also a mix of lower capacity uh, tire mounted cranes uh, which are used for uh, in the sector specifically uh, okay and so just the last question is to follow up uh, in compared to the infra sector uh, infra sector and compared to metal cement and let's say petrochemicals is there a lot of difference in the yield or it's uh, very similar uh, all across the board uh, there are certain differences, but it all depends project to project and client to client. Um, at the duration of the project, it's, it's very um, variable, so difficult to give a very specific answer to that. Okay, understood. Thank you so much, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Dipen Vakil from Incred Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, so, uh, my first question is on the line of, uh, uh, I wanted to understand a little bit about your uh, order, new order wins. So, and what is the usual execution period for your new order wins? 
Okay, uh, so in our two primary segments, one is the warehousing and logistics segment. Um, there, there the order wins are usually, the execution period is usually five years to seven years as the tenders and the contracts tend to be on the long-term tenures. With regards to our equipment rental business, there it can range from anywhere between six months to even three years, depending on projects. The clients usually give out orders in the range of six months to one year, and then the, they are further extendable by every six months or three month basis based on the kind of project and the kind of uh, industry we are working with. Uh, so, so I wanted to understand uh, what are the new order wins that you are uh, expecting in uh, going ahead because our current order book uh, of 138 crores, I believe, would be exhausted. At, at least a part of it will be exhausted much before the financial year, year ends. So what would be the kind of order pipeline that you would be looking at? And uh, that takes me to what would be the growth that you would be in, uh, forecasting for uh, FY25? Okay. So to answer that, sir, uh, first I'll just correct one uh, statement that I made in the earlier question to uh, Ms. Dolly. I think the order book as of today of 138 crores, the percentage share of our warehousing and logistics is 55%, which I incorrectly uh, read as 70%. So it's 55% and the balance 45% is from equipment rentals. With regards to your question on the pipeline in play, so that uh, because Q3 and Q4 tends to be the best sectors for our equipment rental segment, there we do see a surge in demand and new orders coming in during that period. As for the growth, um, we have set ourselves the aggressive target of 30% Y on Y growth uh, this year. So uh, we do see ourselves achieving that. And do we expect to sustain the higher EBITDA margin of close to around 35%? Uh, we have increased the EBITDA to 33% and uh, going forward, our efforts are definitely on to ensure that better EBITDA margins are in place, but uh, definitely, uh, our target would be to at least sustain this, if not uh, increase. Yeah. Great, sir. Congratulations on a great set of numbers for FY24 and all the best for your time going ahead. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Hitesh Gotani, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yes, yes, please. Uh, hi, sir. Thank, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity and first of all, congratulations on the great set of education. Uh, I would like to understand uh, what is going to be the timeline for this uh, 160 crore state export. Uh, like, uh, do we have anything concrete with the client? I have the AC orders. How is it going? Okay, so thank you for the question. Uh, the timeline, as I said earlier, is to spread it across this financial year and the next one. Um, for specific orders, um, we cannot give out details uh, because those are business strategies. Uh, but yes, we do have certain orders lined up. Some of the uh, CapEx will be done in the first half of this year itself, and that will come. That will become more clear once uh, the details are out. Okay. And uh, what uh, what amount can we expect going forward as a depreciation post because it has come down significantly in the Q4? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. So in Q4, we uh, the depreciation amount has come down significantly if we compare it to uh, previous quarters. Uh, so, is it going to be the same uh, like uh, it has in Q4? Yes, yeah, it could, it uh, should be remain similar to what you've seen in Q4, but with the addition of new equipment, that depreciation of the new equipment will definitely lead to certain change on that. Um, but uh, you can do your math accordingly, and uh, it'll be difficult to give you a depreciation number as of now. Uh, but uh, the Q4 numbers are indicative of what you would see going forward. Completely And uh, uh, we, we are doing something on EPC. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, like, uh, have, we, uh, have we closed some deals or how are we progressing on that? So with regards to EPC, we have been working on uh, some order, orders to get for the EPC segment. But we are very choosy and picky on that because we do not want to hamper any of our margins that are currently there. And uh, the idea is to get maintain sustained growth rather than uh, you know going for large numbers for the sake of adding the top line. So we have not ventured into run-of-the-mill EPC contracts. 
these are specialized works that are required in the industries that we are working in currently and uh, the uh, target is to get some good contracts in this financial year and get them up and running so as of today we do not have any contract if that is what the question was uh, we do anticipate that we will have something in this financial year itself are we targeting any specific segment uh, or uh, every any specific industry or is it like uh, like what, what do we have in mind when we are saying like specialized uh, BPCO? Uh, it will be, um, be too open for me to give out the business strategy as of now. Um, we are targeting the sectors that we are operating in, primarily the ones that are part of our revenue mix. So that should give you an idea of where we stand and um, what exactly in the contracts that again will become clear once we are able to back something and we'll declare it. Okay, thank you so much and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Jehan Bhada from Nirmal Bank. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, Manchu. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, uh, can we uh, uh, infer that uh, ballpark capex per year, uh, current year and next year would be 80 crore reach? Uh, thank you for the question, Mr. Jehan. Uh, yes, uh, that could be the ballpark uh, where you could see about 80 odd crores this year and 80 next year. Right. So, uh, so regarding this year's 80 crores, uh, you know, uh, by when can we see the deployment of uh, the equipment uh, at sites? So, given uh, the cyclic nature of the industry, uh, we do see that the deployment will happen Q2 onward. Okay, got it. And uh, last question on uh, uh, funding for this uh, CAPEX over two years. Uh, will we need to raise any capital for this, uh, equity capital? Uh, we haven't yet taken a decision on any uh, equity capital raising for uh, as such, uh, but if anything does come up, that will be announced in due course of time. But as of now, it is targeted through internal accruals and debt funding. Right. Okay, uh, and uh, one more question, Imanshu. Uh, uh, if you can throw some light on uh, the equipment renting industry, because you know, primarily whatever listed companies are there, they are mainly into wind. A uh, uh, couple of them. So, if you can, uh, you know, uh, share something about uh, uh, overall equipment renting industry, where you particularly cater to. Right. So, uh, like how many players? How many competitors, etc. Okay, so uh, we are primarily, as you have seen, we are operating across sectors of infra, metals, cement, petrochemicals, and there are certain other sectors, smaller sectors. Uh, so we, the, the way it works is the equipment is rented out to our clients for their various projects as per their requirement where they are executing, be it a capacity expansion project where in a cement plant, let's say they are constructing a new plant altogether or expanding on a running cement plant, so various types of cranes starting from the smallest beat 15 ton pick and carry crane as manufactured by Action Construction or the like, up to larger cranes of about 1000 tons capacity as well, which are brought in primarily from outside, uh, are utilized by these clients for manufacturing their, uh, for uh, uh, sorry, for uh, constructing their manufacturing facilities. And there the com competition as such would be that uh, apart from the Organized players, which is one being Sangvi and the other being uh, still unlisted companies, but they're still uh, better off because of being in the industry for a long time. There's a competition. There's some competition from smaller players also at times, but um, as specific competition in the larger crane sector, that is very limited. So the visibility is more clear in that in that space. Right. Okay. Thank you so much, Imanshu. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Kaushal from Adinath Wealth. Please go ahead. Mr. Kaushal, you can go ahead with your question. Hello, Mr. Kaushal, you can go ahead with your question. As Hello? there is no response. Hello? Yes. Yes, we can hear you, Mr. Kaushal. Yeah. As there is no response, we'll move ahead to the next participant. Next question is from the line of Utkarsh Patel from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Congratulations for a good set of numbers. Thank you. 
Yeah. I wanted to check on one piece, this depreciation piece, right? You said that you have a depreciation of 6 crore in the previous quarter, right? And uh, uh, for the full year, it is closer to 30 crore for, for Karachan as a company. Right. And, uh, and if I see the average net block for the full year was closer to 260 to 70 crores and, and the average net block is 160 crores for the full year, right? So the depreciation on the average number looks, the percentage looks a bit high. And even if you compare with some of the peers that we have, right, uh, this this number is kind of towards of the peer set, right? So is it something that we have been doing, we have been depreciating it more consciously and now we are kind of moving to a bit more realistic estimate in terms of depreciation or, or uh, what, what is the, what is the uh, thought process behind this? So the uh, one change that I would uh, say that has come about is over the last couple of years, the company has brought in larger machines which were not part of the fleet earlier. Uh, primarily. So a lot of the capex that has been done over the last two years or so has been into large cranes, uh, primarily crawler cranes, which do tend to depreciate over a longer period of time. So that change uh, has come into effect into the depreciation numbers and certain correction, as I had answered an earlier question, has been done uh, from, from Q4 of the last financial year, which the impact is visible in the numbers as well. Okay, so the Q4 was not a balancing number as such, right? And it's more like 6 crore would be the run rate from Q1 onwards, excluding whatever new case X you'll do, right? That's correct. Okay, okay, understood. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rishit Shah from Nuvama Wealth. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Good evening. Thanks for the opportunity. And congrats on a good set of numbers. So just one question, while all the other questions have been answered, just one question. So we highlighted in the opening remarks that the transportation segment has seen a 400 basis point decline in margins. Can you highlight the reason for this? Uh, yes, so thank you for the question. Uh, so the decline in margin in the uh, transportation segment has been because of certain new contracts that came into being in the last financial year itself. And they have taken a little bit time to take off. So that has led to a stress on the margins. And we see uh, because of these uh, contracts being long term, like four to five years, so usually uh, the, the stress in the first year or first six months or so of a starting contract does average out over the next uh, balance period of the year. So whatever challenge we've had, we see that coming up, coming, uh, being made up in the coming years. Okay. Uh, got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Sunil Jain from Nirval Bank Security Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, sir, you said that the yield is 2.85%. Uh, so even if I take your gross block at 298 crores, which you had said at the year end, uh, the revenue works out to 102 crores, but your revenue is 174 crores. So what is the difference? Uh, sir, to answer that, uh, we are uh, into three different segments, and the our gross block of 298 includes all our uh, machinery, plant, and even any land or other aspects of the entire fixed asset book, right? So uh, uh, the revenue mix that we get for our equipment, hiring projects, hiring in projects, that is where we are talking about the average yield. Whereas uh, in our warehousing and transportation, the, the uh, deployment of equipment or assets is much smaller compared to the equipment rental business. So uh, if you do a, a revenue mix comparison there, you'll be able to get a better understanding of this uh, number that you're looking at. So, but in warehousing also, there is a deployment of equipments and all. Means right, you but that is done. It, it is not on hiring. So in the warehousing uh, segment, it is uh, on the tonnage of steel handled. So the economics work on the tonnage of steel handled where equipment is a component of the overall picture. And that is why we, we do not work on a yield on a per month basis because it is not a rental model there. So the second segment where the you get an yield and uh, for that, how much is gross block? Can you disclose that or no? 
Uh, I, uh, I don't think we have the cross block numbers on that, or, or those are dis disclosed. I'll have to get back to you on that, sir. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Sunil Shah from SRE PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so thanks for the opportunity. Uh, one first question is uh, we have about 300 equipments which we are dealing it on rent. Uh, so what would be the replacement cost of those machines today? Meaning I think our net block is at about 260-70 crores. But what is the replacement cost of this machine? If you can know that. Okay, so thank you for the question, sir. Um, so our gross block as of date is about 298 as of 31st March 24, and our net block is 180 odd crores. Um, so if we are looking at a replacement, uh, usually it is again um, a tricky question because it is all dependent on the demand. Uh, the equipment uh, is able to sell out at about 60% of its original value even after about, say, uh, 8 to 9 years or 10 years of usage. Uh, but if the market is very good, the number can be much higher. So what you see as a net block as of now, um, the best case scenario, I would say, can even be about uh, 220-odd crores, and the worst case scenario uh, on a replacement basis would be about 150-odd crores. So safe assumption would be assets, as of today, more closer to the net block, like 180-odd crores, would yes. be a safe, safe assumption. So the numbers match according to the annual report. Uh, so my yes. second second question, as you explained very nicely on your uh, equipment leasing model, how does this warehousing and logistics business work? For me to understand, like steel companies, they make the steel and we procure from them, put it in our warehouse, and then wherever they want across the country, we distribute it to their distributors. How how does that work? If you could explain to me in very simple logical terms. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so uh, in our steel warehousing and logistics, basically we're working with the manufacturers of steel, wherein there are branch warehouses of those manufacturers, so owned by them, or there are branches where the warehouses are owned by us, but they are in under contract with the primary uh, customer, which is RINL or sale. The products that are manufactured at their plants are shipped by them, through rail or by road. If it is by road, there are certain contracts where we have the road transportation under us. Otherwise, there are uh, uh, third, you know, other parties also in the market who are doing the road transportation. And then there is rail transport, which happens through various uh, contracts that the clients have with their with the Indian railways. So the material re is received in the warehouses, where our then contractual obligation is to unload the material, stack it in the stockyard as per the guideline of the client then load it onto the trailers for dispatch to their end-user client. So that is the composite uh, services that we have to provide to our customer, uh, to our client. And in that, there are inbuilt transportation contracts where the end-user requires material is being transported by sale itself to its doorstep. So there we get involved uh, in part of the transportation as well to the end-user's doorstep. Right. So this is like... If I'm understanding it, it's a very, very long-term contract of, as you said, five, six years or so. Right. Uh, there would be various price escalation risks which would be involved over this long period of time. How do we, you know, or is there any back-end tie-up with those companies? How do we mitigate that? Okay. Because so on the end, you know, fuel prices are Sorry, sir. Sure. No, no, sorry to cut you off. Uh, yeah. So uh, to on the escalation front, uh, the contracts have inbuilt escalation for the fuel and manpower cost, which are two main components. And um, those those formula are in play and on a yearly or half yearly basis as per the contractual terms, the escalation is uh, claimed from the client. Okay. Uh, fine, sir. So I just wanted to get some understanding on the on the USP or, you know, the stickiness of those customers to remain with us over this duration of time. Uh, so, just want to get that understanding, if, if, you know, if you could make me understand that. Why would it still be with me for like six years? What is it that I bring on the table for them? Right. So, see, we've been into steel warehousing and logistics for four decades now. And uh, these, the, by the virtue of the contract, 
uh, this being a government tender and the contractual terms saying that it has to be there for six years. So that one is a statutory requirement that the contract has to be there for six years. Two, um, because of the virtue of our being in this segment and being an expert player in this area now over these years, uh, that stickiness is there. And three, uh, we have brought in innovative techniques for handling of steel. We are the only private company in the country to own 10 rubber tire gantry cranes, which are used for efficient uh, handling of steel. Apart from us, the only companies that have their own uh, rubber tire gantry cranes are Steel Authority of India Limited themselves, RINL or Tata. And I think JSW is also bringing it now. So we have brought in uh, innovative techniques of handling steel, which has added to the stickiness of our customers. Okay. So if I can ask one more question. You know, on, on the equipment, we mentioned that we are having a yield of 2.85% on a monthly basis. Uh, if we can get a percentage on our warehousing business as well, because for me to understand, you know, this, this yield works out great on an annual basis of 2.85%. But what about on the warehousing? Because on my capital employed, what is it that end of the day I am able to earn uh, from both of this is vertical? Okay. So, you know, sir, to answer yeah. that, sir, I think I was trying to answer in the earlier question as well. Uh, because this is a composite service and the equipment is not specifically given out on a rental basis, so the yield is not uh, calculated by us on a, on a monthly yield basis here. The target more so is to um, work towards ensuring that we handle the highest possible tonnage of steel as per the contractual terms so that the income and the revenue and the profitability can be worked out on that. So it will be difficult for me to give you a yield Fair. number for that segment. Fair enough. Just one last bit. Is, is our rentals on the warehousing connected anyways to the steel prices? To the? To the steel prices, the volatility of steel prices. Is it nothing at all? Nothing at no. all. Uh, the the R prices are fixed for the contract plus the escalation clause that is there, and the only change with steel prices is basically the demand and supply in the market, which uh, leads to the change in probably at times the volumes of steel handled by us. But because production is happening round the year and round the clock, so steel has to come out and we have to keep handling it, and so there is no major cha challenge or change with regards to steel pricing there. Right, sir. Thank you so much and connect with Taylor and, you know, book your time for another call. Thanks, thanks so much for the time. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Anand Sarda from CIL. Please go ahead. Um, hi, Manshu Ji. Thank you so much uh, for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, so, do we... And we charge to also participate in more tender, uh, tenders for warehousing, like new uh, long-term uh, tenders for segment B. Yes. So uh, to answer that, thank you, Mr. Sardha, for the question and the congratulations. So um, we are uh, always looking for new tenders whenever they do come up. And uh, like the, I was just uh, answering an earlier question where a new contract we had one recently just started execution in May 24 itself. Similarly, there will be other contracts that do keep coming up. And we do our due diligence with regards to the visibility on the possible margins and the pricing that we can get for those contracts, and that is when we take a call on participation. So this 160 crore of uh, CAPEX that is to be executed in two years does not include any CAPEX for the warehousing segment, sir. Does it include no. Nothing that we, at least the 160 crores that has been uh, proposed with uh, Zoomland, that is not uh, considering the warehousing uh, segment. But therein, I would like to add the capex for any new contract is very limited uh, because there are much smaller machines which are used for the warehousing uh, and uh, transportation works. And the kind of uh, fleet we have for, for our trailers and the associated network, which has close to about 500 trailers as part of our committed, partnered uh, trailers. So we do not require much greater uh, need for adding more and more CapEx in this segment, even with new contracts. Okay. And uh, uh, what is the strategy when you decide how much of CapEx that you want to spend on cranes? I mean, two years, 160 crores, you're doubling your net block. You already have some orders in hand. That's why you are uh, uh, buying these cranes. Or, like, how do you uh, foresee that much. 
Right. So uh, with the network of our clients, yes, there are certain orders in hand which enable us to take a decision. Plus, uh, with the kind of red network and rapport that we have with our clients due to our existence in this sector for 20 odd years now, uh, we have a visibility on what the possibility possibility of which equipment is going to be there and which will give us a long term visibility vis a vis the margins as well. So that that has helped us to chalk out the equipment that we wish to buy, and we have uh, gone for a bulk proposed uh, purchase plan with the supplier to ensure that we have the availability of that machine once the orders are in place so that we've done an initial booking per se in, uh, to just kind of give an idea uh, so that we have given a target on when the equipment would be required based on the discussions and, you know, in principle uh, understandings with our clients. So that, that has been the basis for that purchase plan. Okay. And the last question, uh, going forward, what do you think, because of uh, certain expansion that will happen in your company, uh, what do you think will be the uh, average uh, monthly yield, uh, which you can tell me after, like, you know, after you buy the 160 crore of KTEX? And uh, uh, what is the net yield right now? And, you know, what was the net yield last year, like in SI 23? Yeah, so uh, to answer that, um, the yield for the new equipment that we are bringing in, we will. Um, the, uh, the idea is to maintain the yield levels that we are at right now because they are at a pretty healthy level. And, and those, those are the yield figures that we would anticipate and we understand with the uh, kind of orders that are being discussed that we should be able to maintain those yield levels. Uh, with regards to net yield, the net yield roughly comes to about um, for the current net yield the uh, the gross yield that we have given is 2.85 percent. Against that, uh, we can consider a net yield of about uh, 1.95 percent. And uh, similarly, for the year prior to that, uh, our net yield would have been around. I do not have the fingers in front of me right now, but I, from what I recall, they were about 1.75 percent the year before that. Thank you so much, Ivan Shuji, uh, and congratulations once again. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Bhavani from Krijuna Research. Please go ahead. Uh, so thank you, sir, and thank you for the opportunity, and congratulations on good set of numbers. So I just wanted to know that also some of my questions have been answered, but I wanted to understand that you said your monthly yield is 2.85 percent with regards to equipment and yield. So I just wanted to know how do you arrive at this number? How do you calculate this? Uh, so the yield is calculated. Uh, so thank you first for the question and the congratulations. And the yield is calculated basis the revenue that we earn from uh, the equipment, uh, from the rental revenue that we earn vis-a-vis -vis the cost of equipment that we are deploying the uh, for that specific revenue. So, for example, if we are deploying a 10 crore crane uh, and we are earning 25 lakhs out of it, that would lead to be 2.5% is the yield for that, just to give you an idea. Uh, so, and that will mean that since your uh, rental is 2.85%, so uh, if I can say a payback period of three years for any new crane which you purchase right now, Ideally, yes, uh, that would be the scenario if this is sustained over uh, the three-year period. But uh, because of the industry being cyclical, uh, we, it is hard to give you a clear-cut uh, yes on the three-year figure, three-year number that you've said. But yes, at 2.85%, at it easily calculates to three-year, three-odd years as the result. And sir, when last, do we expect this, um, uh, rental need to go up uh, in the uh, further years, non-financial years? Um, as I was just answering the earlier question, sir, uh, we are already at healthy numbers. Uh, we are targeting, obviously, the target would always be to improve on those yields, uh, but uh, we do see that uh, it will be good to sustain these numbers and um, we'll have a better visibility on any increase in the yield, probably by Q3. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Dolly Chaudhary from Niveshay. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the follow-up, sir. I, I, I want to know on steel logistics type, like are we planning to enter into private segment also or how competitive this uh, industry is? 
Uh, I could not hear you correctly. Uh, clearly, uh, Ms. Rolly, could you please repeat? Yeah, I, I wanted to know on steel logistic question that uh, how, like, how competitive this industry is and are we planning to enter into private sector as well because just, uh, as of now we are seeing the CSEs only. So are we planning to expand our segment? Yes. Uh, so uh, we are already uh, working somewhat with our private clients as well, be it Tata, Jindal's, AMNS. And, uh, but because of them not being uh, in large volumes right now, so we do not, we haven't had them, uh, become major clients in that segment. Uh, but we do have, uh, the opportunities to work with them in, uh, in the warehousing and logistics sector as well, whereas we are already working with them in the equipment rental segment. With regards to competitiveness, uh, it is for any industry, the competitiveness is already there. Um, there are people who want to do the job and everybody wants to get it. So, but with regards to how competitive, um, there, these are all specialized natures of job and they, they require certain understanding of how steel industry works. So only people who are attuned to understanding of the nature of the industry are able to compete in these contracts. So that makes it a little niche. Uh, but within that, it is competitive. We do get the advantage of having better equipment and better expertise with our uh, knowledge and experience of 40 odd years, which helps us to be more competitive on that. Okay, and uh, just on our guidance that we have guided to grow at a 30% year on year basis. So, if you can please throw some light on the segment size, how are we planning to go for equipment? Because we are doing capex and equipment rental, so I guess we are planning to grow more than 30% in that segment. Is what I'm getting. Uh, yes, so um, it will be a through and through uh, growth uh, with uh, probably equally distributed across both sectors because uh, as I was answering the earlier question, the asset addition in the warehousing and logistics is not very high even if we get new contracts. So the target is to maintain the growth across both sectors whereas because of more capex in the equipment rental, we can see slightly higher growth in that sector. Okay, and on EBITDA side, we have a uh, 58% EBITDA for equipment rental for this quarter. So, is it sustainable going forward? So, the, the financial year EBITDA was 51% and uh, the quarterly EBITDA was about 58 uh, So, I would say that uh, anywhere between 50 to 55% is the sustainable range. Okay, that is the all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Surya Narayan, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Thank you. Please. Yeah. Thank you, Ramasuji, for giving me opportunity. Congratulations for getting the numbers. So, just wanted to uh, understand uh, that now we are not present in the private space sector, uh, and where the uh, steel capacity is uh, going to be ramped up nearly double uh, for coming years. So, so just to understand whether the private players are managing their warehousing on their own capacity, or they are also housing from company like ours. A, B. Uh, if you can answer, then I will follow. Up. Yeah. Yeah, so for the first question, sir, first of all, thank you for the question. Uh, yes, they are uh, in a similar model, but there we understand it is a combination of self as well as outsourced warehousing and handling, whereas in the case of uh, the public sector undertakings, it is 100% outsourced. Okay, okay. So the next question is that, now, uh, are there any other uh, uh, avenues in the infrastructure where we aspire to enter, where you see the eagles will be higher than the current ones? In the infrastructure space? Yeah. Uh, so in the infrastructure space, the uh, the yields are pretty much stagnant because uh, it is, that sector works in a different way and it is more subcontractor driven because the government gives a contract to a company and that company then takes a, takes up the equipment on rentals. So there, uh, the yields are pretty much decided because the budgets are very fixed on a project-to-project -project basis. So there are, at least as far as our understanding goes, we do not see uh, much change uh, on the yield side in the infra space. Okay. And, so, uh, so, and thirdly, uh, 
as we are present uh, in this space for multi decades so we understand the life of the assets very well uh, whereas maybe the auditor concerned uh, you know, may not have that kind of experience uh, regarding the uh, you know, life of the assets and the depreciation is all related to the asset of the life so uh, so my question is that uh, as uh, as you said that you know, the life of the assets tends to be uh, at least on a 10 year plus or 15 years and uh, and whereas we are depreciating very aggressively at around seven for seven year life so my 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 point here is that so can't we just uh, uh, you know, uh, see that the uh, the depreciation is charged uh, fairly and uh, to uh, give proper representation in the pnl Uh, so to answer that, um, I think uh, earlier also a similar question was there. Uh, so the depreciation uh, for it is it is not similar across the board. Uh, we've got various types of equipment and other things, and the depreciation is taken into account on on the kind of asset we are depreciating. Uh, with larger cranes, as I have said, uh, the depreciation can go up to 20 years as well, and for some cranes it is 15. so based on that a uh, certain correction where it required was done and that those numbers are already reflecting in the last year's financial year financial results and you'll see those that uniformity going forward and uh, can it be possible to give the uh, let's say out of the total 300 or crore of gloss work uh, is it possible to give the asset block wise the aging of the asset so that no, we can understand uh, even you need not to detail out but at least uh, as a block wise you can give let's say uh, 100 crores of asset is uh, the uh, aging is uh, let's say for 15 years so that no what is the remaining uh, life of the asset so that no we can at least understand the progression of the life of the asset and uh, at least estimate on our own at least something uh, regarding depreciation sure thing sir uh, we will do that uh, thank you for the suggestion and uh, we'll work work out on that and probably i'll have the discussion with our auditors and uh, we'll see if we can put that out in the next results thank you i think we'll take the last question now if there is any uh ladies and gentlemen that was the last question of the day i now hand the conference over to mr himanshu agarwal for closing comments over to you sir thank you and uh, once again thank you everyone uh, for joining the earnings call for our q4 and financial year ended 31st march 2024 i hope uh, i've been able to give out suitable and uh, detailed answers to your queries and uh, i we always look forward to interacting with you going forward the company remains committed to sustained growth and continue to work towards nation building and we sincerely hope that our aggressive target of 30% year on year growth is met so till next time goodbye and thank you have a great day ahead thank you